Hello viewers, four DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to clean the carburetor on your small engine. Also, don't forget to check out my website at www.4diyers.com or click on the link in the description below. First, we are required to remove the carburetor from the engine. Styles and removal processes will vary. Here I'm working with a snowblower. Some engines may or may not have a cover, air filter, other items in a way, etc. With this application, snowblowers are not equipped with an air filter, therefore I am not required to remove one. However, I will be required to remove the chute crank, along with pulling the choke knob off and then removing the cover. Now once we have access to the carburetor, most are mounted in a similar fashion, usually using two bolts that connect to either the intake manifold or some bolt directly to the engine block. If they are equipped with an intake manifold such as this model, they can be removed by disconnecting the bolts directly from the intake manifold or removing the intake manifold and carburetor assembly straight off the engine block. Normally I do like to take the intake manifold off as well, as they can suffer from some buildup in the inside that does need to be cleaned. The bolts that are directly fastened to the engine block, if they haven't been removed for a while, they can sometimes be seized. Here I'm using a hand impact driver which provides some shock to the fastener while performing a twisting action. This also greatly reduces the risk of stripping the Phillips screws as well. Remove the fasteners fully. You may find the carburetor or intake manifold is stuck, which is fairly normal. Just apply a little pressure and then it'll pop right off. Next, remove the fuel line. Pliers may be required in order to remove the rubber lines as they do have a tendency to dry out. Then finally, remove the metal push rod that is connected to the throttle. Here you can see a close-up of the carburetor assembly. Find a safe area to work so we don't risk any chance of losing any of the small parts during the disassembly process of the carburetor. I'm also removing the two Phillips screws that hold on the choke assembly. Now moving on to the bolts that hold on the intake manifold. Remove the two carburetor adjustment jets, the first one being the idle adjustment. You can determine its existing position by turning the screw all the way in until it stops and counting the rotations. The second is the main jet and counting the turns as well to find its existing position. Remove the retaining sleeve holding on the float bowl. Also be aware that there might be some fuel still present in the float bowl, which will dump out, so be prepared for that with a pan. Then remove the float bowl. You may find that it is stuck in place, but with a little force, it'll pop off very easily. You will find that there is dirt sometimes present in the float bowl. As you can see, there's a small amount of debris in this one. I have came across carburetors in the past completely full of debris and crusty buildup. This will need to be cleaned out. Using needle nose pliers, remove the pin holding on the float. Now carefully remove the float along with the needle. Some may be held in by a wire clip such as this one, others can fit into a slot, it does vary between models. Here I'll be using a throttle body carb and choke cleaner made by Permatex which can be purchased at any local auto parts supplier or hardware stores. Only use the carburetor specific cleaner as this won't damage any of the components associated with the carburetor, yet it'll still clean the unit very efficiently. This cleaner specifically cuts back any residue or build up fast and easily and doesn't leave any residue behind. In the past I have found some cleaners to leave a residue which can cause some problems afterwards. For cleaning the outside we can use a toothbrush to remove any of the debris. It is best to apply the cleaning product in a bucket or pan large enough so the product doesn't spray around on any surrounding objects. Here I'm using an oil drain pan. I would highly recommend wearing safety glasses because there are various passages in the unit. When spraying the cleaner into any of the orifices, some can be directed back at you or the product may not fully pass through any orifices and miss towards you. So use caution when spraying. I do also recommend wearing latex gloves as well to reduce the risk of any skin irritation. Start by applying the cleaner to the outside, washing any dirt away. Then move on to the inside and finally moving on to the passages. For added assistance, you can use an object to push through the passages such as fishing line. Or here I'm using torch cleaning tips. But when using torch cleaning tips, you must be extremely careful as they do have a slightly abrasive surface on the outside which can increase the size of any holes, especially in the brass components, therefore damaging the accuracy of the carburetor. So always proceed with caution with these cleaning tips. Also, don't forget to spray the cleaner into the intake manifold if your small engine was equipped with one. You may find some of the O-rings or seals have dried out over time. Now is a good time to replace those by either going to your local auto parts supplier, which can match up some of the O-rings, a small engines dealer, or even online. 
Sometimes we can salvage the old gaskets, other times they're too far deteriorated or get damaged in the removal process. If you do find the paper gaskets have been damaged, you can remove them by using either a gasket scraper or a razor knife on edge, but do not damage the ceiling surface on the carburetor, intake manifold, or engine block. Once the gasket has been removed, I like using a stone to smoothen out the surface to remove any imperfections or corrosion to ensure it's flat. When using a stone, apply a little penetrating oil to the surface so the aluminum does not plug up the stone's abrasive surface. Apply more oil when needed or remove any sludgy residue with a cloth if it becomes too excessive. Always ensure the area is well lubricated. As for the new paper gasket, you can purchase new ones or make your own. Be sure to check out my tutorial on that which I will include in the description below. Give the unit a final spray down, clean the adjustment needles as well, and then allow everything to dry. Be sure to install the float bowl in the correct orientation as it won't function properly. The float must be able to swing down in the lower portion of the float bowl. If not, the unit won't get a sufficient amount of fuel which is controlled by the needle. As for an added note, some carburetors are equipped with a brass float. These can crack and leak over time which will cause engine running issues. With that being said, these can be fixed. I will have a tutorial video for that to determine if it's causing an issue in the description below and also how to repair it. Once done, reassemble the carburetor. As for the needle settings, you can adjust them by the previous setting that was before the disassembly process. Now the only downfall with that is, is that it could have been possibly wrong because over the period of time someone may have moved those around. Therefore, you can also go with a generic setting which will get your engine running. Now the idle screw should be set to 3 quarters of a turn and the main jet on the float bolt should be set to 1.5 turns. Both jets need to be screwed in all the way, then backed off until the appropriate setting. When reinstalling the carburetor back onto the intake manifold, I'll be using a blue medium strength thread locker made by Permatex. This is a small engine and will suffer from vibrations, therefore this will reduce the risk of the bolt loosening up over time. This product also protects the threads from any corrosion and can be removed easily afterwards using hand tools. Beyond cleaning the carburetor, I've also polished and ported it. If you're interested in seeing a tutorial on that, I will include the link in the description below once it's released. Reinstall the carburetor back onto the engine block. Again, you can use the same product, blue medium strength thread locker made by Permatex on the bolts. This concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.